Hi guys, hope everyone's doing well. Now you might notice behind me I've got a uh, bit of a piece of history here. This is an iMac G3. Now I've already done a video on an iMac G3 and you'll have to excuse the dickhead outside doing lawn care. Saturday afternoon. Um, I've already done a video on this but you might remember in my last video I, I mentioned that this iMac G3 didn't have a CD drive, but you might have noticed that um, it, it has now. That's because I scored another iMac G3 from work, and that one was dead. It just kernel panicked with OS X. It was exactly the same hardware-wise as this, same RAM, same processor, same hard disk. So I thought, let's keep it for spares. Um, and the first thing I did was take the CD drive out of the old one and put it in this bad boy. So now this has a working CD drive. The next thing... This was running 9.2, so that was the last version of Apple's classic OS, which is pre-Mac OS X. It's not pirated or anything, well... I have Jaguar here. Now, Jaguar was the sick third, third, technically fourth version of Mac OS X, because there was a public beta, 10.0, 10.1, and then 10.2. Um, so this is 10.2. I didn't go for 10.1 because it had a lot of stability issues, and so did 10.0. 10.2 was the first version that did really nicely, um, and it's also the version that runs best on machines like this that don't have at least 256 megs of RAM, especially when the system's completely up to date, which I'll do after I've installed it. Um, I will put more RAM in this. The thing was I was hoping I could take the 128 that was already in the... Um, other iMac G3 and put it in the second slot of this so I'd have 256 but the problem is there's two types of RAM in these iMacs there's a low profile and a high profile RAM for some stupid reason the high profile is 32 megs built in I think and there's a slot for up to another officially according to Apple I think 128 or something like that but these will actually take up to 512 so what I'll end up doing is getting a high profile 256 and a high and a low profile 256 and having 512 in this baby then I'll put it on to 10.3 Panther and go from there but um first off let's do some installing there we go so it's from a yeah good day. There's actually a bit of a story to this. Um, that drive is from a blue iMac, right? So the exterior of the iMac is blue, but that CD button is green, which means that's come from a green iMac, and now it's in a purple iMac. They did release the Trailload iMacs in a lot of colours, so we're going to boot into 9.2 for the last time, and then reboot into the installer for 10.2. The other thing you have to do on these things is make sure the firmware is up to date. And after spending forever trying to find the stupid firmware update, because I found it easy, but then it wouldn't open on this, um, I found a website which said make sure you've actually got outdated firmware, because you might have the latest one. And of course, lo and behold, I boot this into open firmware, and it says firmware version 1.2, which is the one you need, build date 16th July 1999. So I spent all the time looking when... Uh, I didn't need it. Um, so if you do want to find that, I'll put a link in the sidebar because I imagine some people who have iMac G3s wanting to put them onto OS X might want to have a look. I'll put it in the sidebar and you can have it have a look. Alrighty. Install Mac OS X. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, that's an old looking logo. Hang on, I'm gonna have to reposition this with the video camera. Ooh. Look at that. Mac OS X. Let's give it a reboot. Now I've never done this before because the first actual iMac I owned was a... Oh. Uh, Fuck off. Stupid neighbours. Um, the, uh, the first Mac I had was an iMac but it was um, an iMac... Intel, it was a Core 2 white iMac, so this is a bit different. Oh, there we go. Alright, so it's starting. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is quite, this is quite cool for all the geeks in my fan base. Look at that. Look at the glossy 
Look at the gloss on that. Oh, it's so shiny. Right, I'm going to get the best picture I can for you guys. It is a CRT, so don't expect too much. I think that'll do. Hopefully you guys were alright with that. Alright, select a language. Now, I've done this before, but um, never on something this old. Yep, we'll use English, please. Or we could use Japanese below it, but we'll go with English. The thing about early versions of Mac OS X, certainly more than versions you might have seen, is they were very much based around Aqua. Now Aqua was this revolutionary UI that Apple came up with, and you got to remember that 10 years ago when Aqua came about, most operating systems still looked like Windows 95. You know, grey, no shading, blocky, just there. Aqua and this is in the words of one of its designers, Aqua is lickable. Some of the icons in Aqua are so shiny, you just want to lick them. So, the thing you'll notice, and you can't really see it on this video, but early versions of Mac OS X were very pinstripey, so there's pinstripes all along the windows. They're very glossy, much more than sort of the understated one that you see now in the modern, you know, 10.4, 10.5, 10.6. So let's go continue. Well, the Mac OS X installer. Read the following. You can install this on Power Mac G4, Power Mac G3, PowerBook G4, PowerBook G3, iMac. There we go. 128 megs of RAM. Yes. Built-in display. Yes. Okay. I have updated the firmware. So we're all good there. The system is running the latest firmware that was released. Do I agree to the license agreement? Yep. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that animation. And also, this is the first time that a lot of people saw animations like that. You know, it wasn't something common to computer hardware at the time. Now, I'm not sure what we're going to... Macintosh HD, 6 gigs. Um, look at that. This is a fully fledged OS and it needs 1.9 gigs of space. If you think the current Apple operating systems are small, just look at this. And even before this, you know, 1.9 gigs when Snow Leopard needs, I think, 8, as if you don't go in and start toying with the install. I am going to do that, though, because um, Erase and Install. Yeah, I'm going to do an Erase and Install. I don't want to save whatever's on there. Um, continue. And then I can customise the package, because I don't want it taking up, because, I mean, all this stuff, like... Um, printer drivers. I don't need printer drivers because I'm not going to be using printed printers on this system. What are the additional applications? Acrobat Reader, iTunes and iMovie. I think we'll take that. BSD subsystem. I'm not installing a developer package. I don't want additional Rajan fonts. I don't need localized files in any of these different languages. Wow, so this install is now 1.1 gigs. Wow. 1.1 gigs. Let's do it.